projections for the real estate market can be based out of hope and they also can be based out of fear. And that is what we're going to talk about today. What are the luxury real estate market trends we're seeing, we're taking a leap of faith and predicting for 2024. That's what we're going to talk about today, so don't go anywhere. I'm Sherri Ann Green with Coldwell Banker. Welcome to my YouTube channel that guides home sellers and home buyers in Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia. So what are the predictions for real estate in 2024, specifically luxury real estate? 2023 was kind of a... I call it a drag through the mud kind of year. It just seemed to be such a chore to get everything done. Everybody had a little bit of a trepidation to do anything, right? Buyers weren't really ready to move. They were sitting on the fence. Sellers weren't really ready to move. They were sitting on the fence. But what do we see for 2024? We're going to take a leap here and we're going to talk about six trends for the luxury real estate market in 2024. In this video, I'll outline the first three trends and in part two, the second three. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm glad to have you. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss an episode of what I talk about, which is real estate, Washington, D.C., and all things that surround that. If you aren't new to my channel, you probably remember that I talk a lot about the luxury real estate market. I did a trend report video probably a year and a half, two years ago. I did a report video, which was a four-part series on the luxury real estate market. And this is our updated trend report for 2024. Now, as I mentioned, in 2023, it was what I call a sort of slugging through the mud kind of year. It just felt like it was so hard for everybody. Everybody was sort of wanting to, but wouldn't, couldn't. And it just felt like the year sort of dragged on in the real estate market. But what are we seeing for 2024? Is it going to be that sort of sloppy kind of get to the finish line year or is there a spring in the step? Let's talk about it. Now, the trend report that I'm referencing for all of these is a report that my brokerage puts together. If you want to read the entire report, check the description. I'm going to put a link there. I'm going to highlight the six trends, but if you want to read more and read them in depth and even get a little more knowledge about the luxury real estate report, again, check the description. Everything's going to be there. You can download it and read it cover to cover. So our first trend is shifting out of neutral. Now, when I talk about neutral, when it comes to real estate, residential real estate, you might think that I'm talking about a neutral palette like I have in my office, but that's not what I'm talking about at all. 2023 was sort of this year where we were sort of in neutral. I went a little further and called it slugging through the mud, but it was this period of time where we were just a little bit neutral, a little bit flat. And up until about October, it felt like the whole year was just going to be sitting in neutral. Rising interest rates caused buyers and sellers to hit the pause button, as I mentioned. Sellers sat on the sidelines, sort of reassessing what was happening and really hoping that rates would come down so they could then put their homes on. And they also were waiting because they couldn't find anywhere to go. And buyers too played this waiting game. Their anticipation was that prices would fall or the home that they really wanted to buy would come on the market. And neither really happened there either. So with that, luxury home sales dipped month over month compared to last year, all the way through September. Meanwhile, the overall national average sold price for luxury real estate held relatively steady. Now, yes, some markets saw a dip, but others saw an increase. But in the vein of it's not over until it's over, fourth quarter, numbers started to shift. New inventory of single family luxury homes rose over the previous year. Sales moved up too. Additionally, both sales and inventory declined at a much slower rate than one might expect for the last three months of the year, which is typically one of the slowest times for the real estate market. You see, what's happening here is that those historically low interest rates that we saw during the pandemic, you know, somewhere as low as two, three, four, even up to five percent, they have really put what we're calling the golden handcuffs on sellers. Those lower rates have locked them into keeping their current homes rather than moving on. Now, while it's traditionally thought that affluent sellers are immune to these interest rate hikes, 
because they pay cash for properties, they are impacted by the central bank's decision due to their stock investments and ties to the financial market. And this low inventory has kept prices high even when interest rates are rising. You see, when a seller is the only house in the neighborhood or the only one that's like it in the area, what is their incentive to lower their price just because interest rates have risen? If they are the only game in town, a lot of them have just sat with their pricing right where it is. And we've seen this across the country, smaller towns and larger cities. So in this environment, rates must come down in 2024 for things to change and activity levels to pick up, which is really what we're all hoping. And while it seems like inventory levels are set to change in 2024, the ongoing shortage of luxury homes actually is probably going to continue. The reason? Construction isn't up because of the rising labor prices and the rising material cost. And you couple that with luxury buyers who really are looking for move-in ready properties and you've got the perfect storm. In this environment that we are in, buyers are more picky than ever. You've heard of curb appeal. That's the name of the game today. If a house isn't ready to go, isn't move-in ready, and it isn't pretty much perfect, a buyer is just going to walk away because they're not going to invest what they see is too much for a house that needs too much. Now let's look at trend number two. It's the have-it-all properties. And this goes right along with that perfection I just talked about. Privacy, wellness amenities, lifestyle experiences, the latest technology, turnkey homes, all of these things are going to be the trend for 2024 for the luxury home buyer, the have it all properties. As I mentioned, despite the higher prices and low inventory, buyers have become more demanding. Homes that have been updated with modern luxury standards, those that have new construction feel to them, or they are new construction. Next, some of those unicorn properties are what we call vertical country clubs. For city dwellers, a building that has it all is going to be something that is very popular in 2024. And many of these new high-rise condos are branded residences. Now, if you follow my Instagram channel, you've probably seen me talk about a couple of these, specifically the Bentley residences in Miami and the Waldorf residences in New York City. And they are truly the have-it-all properties, these vertical country clubs. For example, the Bentley residences in Miami caters to people who, uh, yep, you guessed it, love cars. Every single unit comes with a three to four car garage right outside of their living room. Yes, right outside of their living room in a penthouse situation. So you drive your car into the elevator that's actually called the Deserator, named after the developer, and you drive your car in and the elevator takes your car up to your floor it scans your garage, it knows which spot is open, it turns and places your car exactly in the right spot. Now you can choose to ride in the car with it or you can ride on the people elevator if you wish, but the garage will do all the heavy lifting. Take the car up, put the car in the right spot and get back down and out of the way. The other cool thing about all of these properties, every single one of them has a private pool. Can you imagine? And then you couple a great award-winning chef and a beautiful access to beaches and a cool amenities level with anything and everything you can imagine. It's the perfect country club in the sky. And the Waldorf is no different. It has more city-focused amenities, like one of my favorites there is everyone has a beautiful hall closet that when a delivery comes or even your evening meal coming up from the chef's kitchen, it can be placed into your closet, you get an alert and you open the door on the inside of your unit and retrieve your packages or your bottle of champagne and your plate of caviar. The branded residence market is expected to grow 55% by 2026 globally. Now, there are some other properties that are also outlined in the report. So remember, make sure you check that and you can read about a few more of these vertical country clubs. Now, our next trend, the AI revolution. Unless you have been living under a rock, you know that we've been talking about AI everywhere in every industry and how it's going to affect what we do. Now, the truth is AI has been around for a long time. We at Coldwell Banker have been using it for many, many years in a variety of different applications. What we're really talking about here is generative AI. And it's so important that the CEO of Anywhere, the parent company to Coldwell Banker and several other large brokerages, 
He even talked about it at JetBlue this last October. And by the way, if people talk to you about AI and they don't put the word generative before it, you should probably be a little skeptical, potentially. Because AI has been around for a long time. There's stuff right. like machine learning that you know we, we've implemented models on in 2018, 2019, that we use out there in different ways for different topics. I can always talk about those. But this generative AI thing is new, and it's in the very early innings. And I'm old enough to remember when companies had internet teams. Whole team of people focused yeah. on this internet thing. Mm -hmm. And then that internet thing permeated everything in our personal lives, our professional lives, and there aren't any internet teams anymore. It's just a part of how we all do business. So AI is here, and most of us have at least dappled in it. Now, I've been taking a course so that I am going to be AI certified to be more efficient for my clients, and there's several things that it can help me generate that can be helpful to my clients as well, like market reports. It's going to impact so much of our lives that I want to learn how to harness it for my clients and for my business. So how will generative AI affect the real estate market? We see several applications here. Actually, there are a lot of applications. Let's talk about several big buckets of where we think there will be the greatest impact. Customer support, market analysis, virtual property tours, automatic document processing, personalized property recommendations, language translation, and predictive analysis. Of course, there are going to be a lot of little things that it can do under each of those categories and probably even some bigger umbrella headlines. But that gives you a good idea of where we're going with this in the real estate industry. What AI can't do, however, is replace the human connection. And in the luxury real estate market, that human interaction, that human analysis, that human experience is really important, has been, and it always will be. And AI is never going to replace that. A luxury real estate buyer and seller, they really wanna sit down around a table or on a Zoom and really talk through what's going to happen to sell, what they should do to be ready to buy. They're going to want that human interaction and that's never gonna change. AI certainly can help us brainstorm better. It can kind of talk about a house when we're talking about one with historic details, but it's never gonna replace me going into that house, seeing, seeing what it feels like and writing the copy for the listing around it. It can help me create market reports, but again, it hasn't been inside any of these properties to really tell if this is an apples to apples comparison. So AI is gonna enhance client experiences, but it's not gonna replace the human interaction. And luxury buyers place a premium on experience from real estate professionals, and they place a premium on having everything that they need and talked about personalized to them. And that's just something AI can't do. One of the things that I think is gonna be really great about AI is the way it could transform the mortgage industry. And it could make the underwriting process, the analyzing a lot more speedy. And that is really uh, exciting because if a loan can get closed as fast as cash, now there's no need for a cash buyer to win out over someone who wants to use a loan product. Think about it. Also, when it comes to virtual tours, you've probably already seen AI being able to do some of this, and it's going to get better. What we have to be prepared for here is, again, that human knowledge, right? And we'll even get to the point where the buyer can ask questions to the AI product that is delivering this information. But AI often gets it wrong. And so that is something that we always, again, will have to measure with that human knowledge and human interaction. Now, this is only a small piece of what AI can do. So make sure you check the report and you'll find all kinds of other cool things. That do you want to know more about the luxury real estate market? You're in the right place. A link to the report is in the description. And don't forget to watch this video next. I selected it just for you.